What's going on guys? Uh, back to make another video. Uh, the weather is finally starting to turn where I'm at. We've had a second winter and third winter and uh, we finally have no snow. So it looks like I'll be able to go back to putting out a video at least every every other week, at least hopefully every week. And um, also prairie dogs are popping back up. Um, they went down for hibernation and they are finally back out. Uh, I drove by the place uh, a couple days ago and I saw several of them up. So I'm definitely looking forward to going out and popping some more prairie dogs. Okay, and uh, for the video today, uh, you guys can already tell by the thumbnail, I got a new gun. It's the FX Crown Mark II. Um, most of my most of the rifles that I have, the air rifles, are bullpups, and um, I I like bullpups because you get the long barrel and you get the compact you know uh, package. It's not so long. It's easier easy to carry around. A little bit easier to shoot off hand, but um, I kind of have the bullpups that I like. And uh, when shopping around for this purchase here that I made, um, I considered uh, lots of stuff. I considered the LCS SK19. I, I considered the Leshy 2. You know, for what I paid for this setup, I could afford basically any any other gun other than maybe like the Red Wolf. And um, I chose the Crown because of a few features, and um, we'll go into that here in a bit. Uh, the only other non-traditional, non bullpup rifle I have is a DreamTac Compact Bottle uh, Bottle Edition, and um, I really like that. It's a, a nice shooting gun. I love the foldable stock. You know, it's like five and a half pounds without a scope. It's very lightweight and easy to shoot offhand. Um, if you guys want to see that review or overview, um, I shot it out 50 yards and uh, 96 yards. I'll leave a link in the description to that video. But um, I really was happy with that gun and it kind of sold me on foldable stock air rifles. They fold up nice and compact, carry them around, and you can whip them out to full size in no time. So um, we'll kind of get into that's about enough of the talk for now. Let me go ahead and swap cameras and we'll take a look at the gun and uh, I'll kind of talk you through some of the new features. Okay, so here it is. The FX Crown Mark II Continuum with the chassis version, uh, chassis on it. Um, I purchased this as the Continuum. I've got both barrels. This is the shorter compact barrel. Um, I do have the longer barrel, the 700 millimeter barrel in the case. Um, one thing to note, uh, I was very surprised I pulled off the barrel and um, I'm always upgrading parts on my rifles and I was gonna upgrade the transfer port on this. I had an extra uh, Huma transfer port and this already comes with an upgraded transfer port. Here is a picture right here of what it looks like. It's got the dual slot on the bottom and right here on the other side, it's got the single hole and um, it's already set up for high flow. So I was pretty happy with that. Both barrels were set up that way. So uh, back to this setup here. The chassis is, is just great. Um, if you've never held a chassis, uh, um, either the DreamTac or anything like that, uh, it's, it's hard to explain how comfortable and adjustable it is once you get it set up. Um, you got the adjustability of the buttstock back here that it just rests perfectly on your shoulders. You don't have to worry about it slipping or sliding around. Um, the way I kind of have it set up is this piece kind of catches the top of my shoulder and it is very grippy. And um, you know, whether you're shooting in heavy clothing during the winter or whether you're shooting lightweight clothing, you know, t-shirt in the summer, it's easy to adjust. You got all your adjustments there. It extends out, it extends back in. You got your cheek piece there that you can go from multiple scopes or even multiple shooters. You know, you, you just, um, it's got two screws over here you got these two screws here and you slide this guy over and you adjust it up or down. Um, I've got this uh, ATN night sight on there. Um, I do have some coyotes. I have chickens that are right there. And uh, I get lots of pests that come over to try to harass them in the middle of the night sometimes. And I have caught coyotes over here by the fence. So that's why I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep this kind of set up for that as, as the, at the moment. But um, I am going to get this thing ready for prairie dogs, and I probably will be using the 700 millimeter barrel on that. And um, they did come with the superior liners, so it's um, I have the same liner in my Wildcat, and I've been able to shoot just about everything from 34 grains down with excellent accuracy and um, slugs and pellets. So I'm pretty happy with the performance of that barrel. I don't see why this one would be any different. Um, I've got the 90 FL Ronin on there. I have several Ronins. There we go. Um, they do an excellent job of quieting everything down and um, I really like them so that's what I got on there I've also got that ergo grip this chassis has T slots and M lock built into the side right there so you can you can throw whatever on there plus it's got the Arca base plus your Picatinny tip on the front so no matter what kind of accessories you have if you have any kind of bipods or whatever set up on any other rifles they're gonna transfer over to this no problem 
Um, let me walk around to this other side here. Um, I've got a magazine holder that you can see right there in the middle. Um, this works for anything that accepts that um, magazine, the Dreamline, uh, Wildcat, Maverick, or the Crown, and uh, it mounts onto the Picatinny base right there. I just 3D printed those. Um, but this is the other side, and um, so far I've only put one clip through this, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, as far as the length, I've got a tape measure here. Give me a second here. From the very tip to the back, we're looking at 42 inches with a suppressor. So pretty compact when it folds up. Um, let me see here, guys. Let me get that measured. It would be easier with another set of hands here. Okay, so we've got to right there. 29 inches is what it's going to be when you when it folds up. Maybe 20, maybe 30 to the back of it. So pretty compact to store it. And then when you need a full size gun, you just crank it right open. So in this video, I'm going to be going over some pellet tests. Uh, the next video will be with slugs, and um, I'm just going to shoot them with a lab radar and shoot them out to 50 yards and kind of see what kind of numbers it's putting out and uh, check on the accuracy for now. And um, well, let's get started on that and see what it's doing. Okay, I've got the camera set up downrange. I've got the lab radar set up. I'm going to just uh, call out the numbers for right now. I'll show you the last string um, once I'm done shooting. Uh, for starters, we're going to be using these uh, FX, 20, what are these, 24? 25.4 grain uh, kings, basically. They're, they're copies of the JSB kings. And um, we're shooting these at about 915 feet per second. And uh, I'm going to put uh, two five shot groups, maybe even one 10 shot group. We'll see what it looks like on target. And let's get, uh, we'll kind of see what the accuracy is doing. Okay, so that first shot goes pretty much right on target. Um, sorry, I don't have enough cameras to show the chronograph, but we're shooting these at about 9.11, all the way up to 9.17. And uh, these first few shots group pretty well. Um, this next one here is a little bit of a flyer, but um, I, I believe I bet if, I'm, if I lower the hammer spring adjustment down, the power wheel down, one or two clicks, I bet it tighten that group up. Might be a little bit fast for those pellets. But um, I, I'm probably guessing that we could tighten these groups up with a little bit of tuning. But for the demonstration purposes of this video, I wanted to kind of shoot the gun as it came out of the box. Um, I didn't tinker with it or anything. This is how it's shooting. And uh, there is definitely some room for improvement, at least with this one pellet here. Okay, so here's the lab radar, 911, there's our velocity to the target, so not bad. Um, let me go ahead and swap out a new, uh, let's see, what next, we'll test out the Hades, since that'll be a similar speed. And um, by the way, my reg pressure is at 150 bar. My transfer port setting is on high and my hammer spring is on five. So let's continue the test with the Hades next. All right, up next is the JSB Hades. They are 26.54 grains. So let's see what these are shooting at.
That was 887. Eight eighty five, eight eighty four, well, I pulled that one, eight eighty four. Eight eighty four. Eight eighty two. Eight eighty two. Eight eighty five. That one did not read. Okay, eight eighty one to finish it up. There's the lab radar, 881. Very, very consistent. This thing is shooting excellent right out of the box. Um, let me go ahead and swap stuff up and we'll shoot the Mark II Heavies next. Okay, last on the pellets for this video is the Mark II Heavies. They are 33.9, 33.95. Let's uh, put a couple, uh, couple round group there and let's see what this thing's doing and then we'll walk down there and check out the target. So that's 796. 804. 803. Didn't read that one. Okay, 791. All right, there's our lab radar. So man, that, if you guys can see from that last group, it's just stacking them in there. Um, I haven't touched this gun. Uh, this is the settings that I got it shipped to. I, I purchased this rifle from Utah Air Guns. Um, as with most of my rifles, I get them from there and you know, I'm never disappointed. This thing's shooting like a, it's shooting great right out of the box. And um, that's all gonna, well, let's walk down there. We'll take a look at the target and then we'll wrap up some final thoughts. And um, the next video will be um, with some slugs. I got some hybrids in this box right there, but we'll save that one for the next video. This is just gonna be a brief overview of what you can expect uh, with this gun right out of the box. So let's walk down to the target and check it out. Okay, here we are at the target. So 
man these are the the mark ii heavies i don't know how many shots we'll have to count it on camera i'll list it down below excellent group um the mark ii i'm sorry the jsb king's shooting great and the hades shooting great um that's all excellent right out of the box like i said um cleaned the barrel and started shooting and uh, this is the groups that i'm getting with three pellets you know three different pellets three different weights this barrel doesn't seem like it's going to be pellet fussy none of my fx rifles seem like they are that way but um let's rock let's walk back to the rifle we'll go over some other kind of thoughts that um or impressions that i that kind of i thought were impressive right out of the box and uh, we'll wrap up the video all right guys let's go ahead and wrap this one up um, as you guys saw by the 50 yard groups, uh, very impressive. You know, there's no reason to think that the 700 millimeter barrel is going to be any less accurate. If anything, it's going to be more accurate and, uh, we'll probably get a little bit higher shot count because we'll get better velocities, uh, with, with the same settings. So, uh, one thing I wanted to point out here, um, I have, I have an impact, I have a wildcat, I have a dream tech or so the dream line and, um, all of them kind of cock differently. Let me kind of show you guys here it's it only cocks back to there so the dream tack get the clip out of there the dream tack cocks back a little bit further and i don't know if it's because i've had more rounds through it i probably had over 2,000 rounds through my dream tack at this point um this is a little bit more stiff um you know you're, you're cocking the same amount of force and you're only move, using half the motion so it's a little stiffer but once you start shooting it off the bench it's it's a quick it's a real quick uh, motion with your wrist to get a cock back, and I like it. It's a lot faster than with the Dream Tack. So once you get into your rhythm, you can kind of rattle them off a lot quicker. Um, another thing, this thing is rock solid off of the bench. This thing is so steady, and with the bag rider in the back, even just keeping your hand back there, it makes it super steady, super comfortable to shoot off of a bench. Um, it's probably, you know, I, my impact is decked out. I've got the rail on it and bipod and all that other stuff. But uh, this one, I'm thinking, is either equal to or better, slightly better than the impact off of the bench. It's just super stable. It doesn't move, and with that grip, it's very comfortable. So um, those are just a few things that I wanted to point out. Uh, if you're looking to get something to shoot off the bench, this is uh, this is a, an excellent choice, an excellent option, and uh, I would highly recommend it. So uh, that's it for this one. Stay tuned for the next video. Um, I'll be doing some more pellet reviews uh, with this gun, some slug tests. We'll be swapping out different barrels. And in a few weeks, um, I don't know how long it'll be till you guys see it, I'll be taking this setup out to be shooting prairie dogs. If you haven't seen any of my prairie dog videos, check out my channel. I've got several of them. Um, I'm definitely going to be sticking it to the prairie dogs with this gun. So thank you guys for watching. Any questions, comments, leave them in the comment section. I'll get back to everybody. And uh, thank you guys for watching.